And now, it's only January 2nd, but he's already been named Man of the Year, Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. The trust to get on mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Love that about you. All right. So why didn't I not mention uh, Bald Brian and Gina Grad? Because uh, they are no longer part of the show. But let me explain. It is not in a bad way. I spoke to both of them uh, earlier today in person and had uh, a very nice, warm and magnanimous chat with both of them who I appreciate, who I respect and who I love and who I've known for many a time. I sent no emails this time. This was uh, one-on-ones. Um, I am making some changes in my life. I have been talking about moving for a long time. And now I'm talking more about moving. And the more I talked about moving out of state, well, my first thought was I'll find a house and I will build a podcast studio in that house and I will continue to work from my studio wherever I am. But the next thought went to well, what's Gina and Brian going to do? Obviously, they're not moving with me out of state. And then I started thinking about sort of chapters and acts in life. Where, where am I? What am I doing? What's, what's next? And I, I've always done formats and then changed formats. I did Love Line for many years, a decade, and I changed. I, um, went to morning radio and I did that format and then I did this podcast format but I've always been interested in evolving changing and going different directions formatically I never thought several years ago that I would make documentaries for instance when I was making the man show or crank anchors I never thought about writing books or documentaries or things like that I get older and you change and you think about different things and for me creatively it's it's one of the best parts about having this job having any creative job is being able to evolve change and change formats and I've always been sort of thinking about what is the next format and for me it's a lot of the elements you're aware of. Obviously, Jay Moore is going to come in here and is going to do all the voices and the jokes and everything. But for me, I've always thought about a more intimate format and I've done a lot more one-on-ones and things of that nature. And so between moving and changing of the format, um, it, it came time to part ways with Bald and Gina, who let's... Um, be very clear about all of this. Uh, I like them personally very much. I respect them. I listen to a lot of the um, Ace Award best ofs over the vacation break. I found myself listening to those. Uh, I thought Gene and Brian were great in those. A lot of stuff made me laugh that I forgot about or maybe even didn't hear in real time. So this is a uh, little to do with them personally and it's or nothing to do with them personally and it's nothing to do with them professionally in terms of their ability it's about me it's about movement it's about format and it's about evolution and it's about change um, I'm not going to sit here and pontificate with a glass of brandy and cigar every every day um, we're going to have an emphasis on uh, on comedy. Do not get me wrong. So, uh, Bald and Gina will be part of the show periodically. Uh, the door's wide open. Anything to plug. I think Bald will do his Baldy Wood uh, maybe once a month, and we'll figure some of this out. A lot of it is fluid. We haven't really, you know, landed on a strict format. It's just going to be a change. And I can't tell you all that entails because uh, I don't know it myself right now. Um, There are many things that are going on in my life. Um, 
um, getting divorced. Obviously, you're aware of that. That has been uh, long and difficult and super expensive and nothing like what uh, was discussed uh, in the early stages of the uh, divorce. So it is it is stressful, time consuming um, and uh, I would say a distraction in general for anyone who's going through it. So it's, it's, it's been a difficult couple of years because it's hard to have, you know, one foot in comedy and the other foot is in, you know, reading emails from, from attorneys. And, uh, it's, it's been long, depressing and expensive and, uh, it, we're not near the end yet. So, uh, but I'll try to compartmentalize and I will, uh, you know, I'll put on the comedy hat when I come uh, into the studio. But in the in the name of transparency, there's you know, life has been it's thrown a few curveballs over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, my mother passed away about uh, six months ago, which is um, an interesting story which will uh, hopefully lead to a little mirth, which is um, my mom passed away. It could have been, I don't know, several months ago. Uh, I never told my kids. Now, why didn't I tell my kids? Um, and you have to understand, I was at Jimmy Kimmel's uh, Christmas party last week or a couple of weeks ago explaining this to uh, comedian Anthony Anderson, who was just finishing telling me that he and his mom are going to Europe to film a series. And I said, uh, well, this is interesting timing because I am having a Christmas party tomorrow and my stepfather asked me if he could bring his girlfriend. <laughs> now I'm talking to Dawson and Chris as I reorient myself and, and there's there i'm going in no particular order there's a lot there's more serious stuff to discuss and there's more random comedy to discuss but i was uh traveling back from tahoe with uh my son my daughter and their friends for a skiing vacation with my girlfriend uh the the day of jimmy's party which was the day before my Christmas party. He actually did it a day earlier. He normally does it on Christmas Eve. He did it the day before. We were hustling back seven and a half, eight hour drive to make the party. I said to my girlfriend, um, by the way, my stepdad's coming and he's bringing his girlfriend. So add another plate. She said, uh, bring in the girlfriend. I said, yeah, he's, there was some arrangement he and my mom did not have a conventional relationship, let's just say. Um, he, the whole time I lived with them, he slept in a separate room. So she had the bath, she had the bedroom. I, I almost called it the master bedroom, but it was a box with a mattress on the floor. And he had the den, which is the den, which is where the TV was. And we sat on his bed and we watched TV. And then at some point we left at night and he just slept on essentially a graveyard of ass imprints on, on his bed. <laughs> Could you imagine sleeping on a bed? Your bed was where everyone sat to watch TV all fucking night. Anyway, they always slept in separate rooms. They always had a different kind of relationship. He was probably 20 years younger than her. God bless him. He, if not for him, God knows what, what would have went on at that house. But um, it was discussed before my mom passed that it would be nice if one of her friends or a mutual friend might uh, offer some companionship to my stepdad before she went. But, all right, it's been done before. I didn't know anything was going to come of it, but I was then informed that she is coming to Christmas at my home. Uh, I said, fine get another plate. Then my girlfriend said, but have you told your kids their grandma's dead? And I said, oh yeah. yeah. 
I forgot. <laughs> now, the reason I haven't told them is, A, I'm a bad person and lazy in that way. But uh, B, they didn't have a very close relationship. My mom's relationship with her grandkids was much like she had with her own kids, a little standoffish. We didn't, didn't do a lot of, you know, we'd get together once a month and talk about brand muffins, but there wasn't that tight a relationship. So you, were, you weren't necessarily avoiding it? You were just, it just didn't happen? Like you just didn't come, come to mind? Here is the, the sad reality. I'm going to guess that reality is it's neither here nor there. I didn't inform my neighbors <laughs> that my mom passed away either. Why should I tell the grandkids? Oh. They, had, they were as close. Now, my mom, look, she loved her grandkids. I'm not, I'm not, she didn't put cigarettes out on them or anything. It, and she had a good relationship with my older nephews. But by the time my kids came around, she was pretty old at the time. And by the time, I don't know, they were 10, 11, you know, last five, six years, she just kind of dropped off and didn't really have that kind of relationship with them. Um, they started a, her and my stepdad started a college fund and, and would put, put away a few dollars every Christmas, you know, as, as part of that. And they weren't, you know, horrible, standoffish, whatever. But my kids never asked, like, where's grandma or where's grandpa? Or they don't really know their grandparents. And um, and now Lynette's parents died quite a, quite a bit ago, so they didn't really have that as a template. And then my parents are my parents. They're doing their own thing, and it, it just it never came up. So, so I'm talking to Anthony Anderson, who's – whose mind is blown because every time you see him do a vodka commercial or make an appearance on Kimmel or whatever, his mama's right next to him. I've, I've tried to explain to black people about white people's relationship with their mamas. And uh, it's, it's always been awkward, but I've always sort of went, I know you guys worship at the altar of your mama. And when you hit it big, you buy him a house and all that stuff. Whitey, we don't really like our moms like you guys like your moms. It's a it's a different it's a different thing. Um, so uh, he was reeling. He's like, "How can you not tell the kids that Mama's gone? I Grandmama is gone." I said, uh, "I don't know. That's just kind of how we roll." And he said. Uh, what about the funeral? What about the wake? I mean, where were they? Like, how did that work? I said, uh, I hope you're sitting down. Uh, no funeral. No wake. There's no nothing. In, in my family, when you die, you take it to the grave. And when I say take it to the grave, I mean the funeral. I mean the party. I mean the wake. It's, it's, and when I say the grave, I don't mean the grave. I mean the ocean. You get, my mom donated her body to UCLA. So everyone else was in the Neptune Society. So when my grandparents died, dude in a station wagon just showed up with a Neptune Society windbreaker and just, just took them. Right. That, that was it. There was no event. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you want to pay 80 more bucks, you could go on the boat ride and do the, the ashes over the open sea. But we're not going to pay that 80 bucks. So my grandparents, just they just got picked up with the dude in the station wagon. That, that was it. Two years later, my grandmother threw a thing for my grandfather because he died about 10 years before her. That's about it. There's been no Corolla family plots, headstones, urns, sarcophagus. It's not a Corolla corner of the <laughs> local graveyard. We did not buy out plots of land to put, put the Corollas. Um, so my mom donated her body to UCLA. So the, some, you know, frat guy showed up on a moped and just uh, some bungee cords and they just took off. I mean, that, that was it. She was gone and there's no events. So Anthony's mind is blown at this point because he just did 20 minutes on him and mama a jet setting through Europe while they filmed their special together. <laughs> and now he's talking. I mean, you talk about two dudes who sat next to each other in a party and their relationship with their mom, you could not, get farther apart 
forget about it, one party. I'm talking about North America. <laughs> you couldn't get his relationship with his mom is insane, insanely tight. No, they work together. And that's part of his shtick is his mama. And then there's the Corolla house. So he's like, oh, man, you got a day you got a day to tell your kids. I said, yeah, I did. I will 830 the next morning. I get a text from him. What's going on? Did you tell him yet? Wow. I go, no, no, I didn't. I'll keep you posted though. He's like, I got to know what's going on. He's probably sitting on his mom's lap <laughs> when he's she probably, he's sitting on her lap and mama's got her arms reaching around him going, uh, you misspelled something, honey bear. Let me just give it a couple mama's thumbs. So he's texting me. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, I got Sonny. Sonny, enough with the fucking driver's license. I made that kid an appointment. I took his ass there two weeks ago. He missed by two questions. We put our tails between our legs. It ruined an entire, entire Friday, whatever. I made him the reappointment. So now we're driving so we can take his written, his written test. And we're making a little small talk and we're getting close to the DMV. And I'm like, I'm realizing, all right, I'm alone with him in a car. And uh, I'm looking at the ways and I'm asking him if he studied this time for the test. And at some point we're just at a stoplight and I go, um, by the by, um, I don't know if I told you, but, uh, you know, grandma, my mom, she, she died uh, the, several months ago. And he said, uh, yeah, I know. And I said, uh, <laughs> you know, and he said, yeah. I said, who told her? His mom told me. I said, why didn't you say anything to me? He said, you didn't say anything to me. <laughs> why, why should I, why should I reserve this courtesy for the guy who didn't tell me? Grandma died. No, I don't, you know, we have a, we have a, you know, don't ask, don't tell policy going over here. Obviously it's unspoken, but it's literally unspoken. He found out, he was told he never said a word. So I said, okay, good. And then he did a thing. And this is a thing I do. And I'm glad he has it. I'm glad somehow through nature, through nurture, I've passed this down to my boy. He looked at me and he went, why tell me now? And I said, I don't know. Just bringing it up, you know? And he's you got like, a new grandma coming. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, uh, <laughs> he goes, now, nah, I want to know why. Like, why? Because that's the way his his brain works, like my brain yeah. works, where I, 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 I'm always hearkening back to that story that I've told you guys where a million years ago, Lynette had this big scuff, like a big black scuff in her Jaguar, and I told her get some uh, get some wax and rubbing compound for the garage. Just put on a wet rag and just just rub it out. It'll it'll go away. And she's like, yeah, all right. Uh, that didn't happen, of course. And then you know, a week later, I'd see it and I'd go, oh, she go get the uh, you know go get the rubbing compound for the garage. Give it a no. It didn't happen. You know, three months went by, and then one morning she said, uh, "Where's that uh, rubbing compound stuff?" And I was like, "Why?" Yeah. And she's like, no reason. Uh, she's picking up a member of the E Street Band from LAX. So, th but that's my whole point. I, there's always a why. If if somebody is doing something that's a little out of character, like me being honest with a family member or my son, <laughs> or tell him, he immediately was suspicious. He like wanted to know why. Then I had to go, well, you know, we're doing the party uh, tonight and uh, Grandpa John may be showing up with his, his new girlfriend. And then I was like, um, all right. So that was uncomfortable. He took the test, passed the test. All right. That was good. And then uh, I said to him, uh, your mom, she told you and uh, Natalia. Yeah. Yeah, she told him to tell you. I was like, all right, check that box. <laughs> we have to have that discussion now. And the fucking party rolls around at six o'clock. My stepdad, John, shows up stag. No girlfriend. <laughs> she couldn't make it. Awesome. Of course. So I had to 
then I called Anthony Anderson. I'm like, I, this is, there's more, more in a text. I can't do this in a text. So I called him and his mom answered, said uh, they were in the bathtub together. Phone was closest to her. So I just explained this entire wild ride. His mind was still blown. He's never seen or heard anything like it. He, he wants to come on the show, by the way. He's, he's local and uh, he wants to come in. So we'll, we'll get Anthony in here because he's a smart guy, funny guy, world-class talker. So we'll do that. So uh, that was that. On a, another note... I, uh, speaking of, uh, the home life, uh, Phil is, uh, 110 pounds of untrained wild beast. He's, he's somewhere between like just a wild boar and a bear cub in terms of like what he can do and what he can get into. And he's also, he's like an alligator. He's like a reptile in that alligators just sun themselves on the shore. Like they don't move. They don't really jog. They don't sashay. They, they're just kind of stone cold. They just sit there. They don't seem to be alive. They don't seem to do anything. And then it's on. And then they're on top of the, you know, baby African kid who's walked down to the shoreline or whatever it is. They go from zero to 60 and then back to zero. Phil, you see Phil, Phil will be napping on the sofa with his two paws, like under his chin, one eye open, the other one closed, like drool coming out, like out, passed out, propofol, propofol, whatever it is, out. And then you'll go, okay. And then you go into the next room and then you walk into the kitchen. It's torn apart. Like, I think he's doing it. I think it's a ploy. So. Uh, now it's the holidays and there's food everywhere and there's boxes and there's, there's cookies and there's candy and it's everywhere. And I set everything on top of the hood vent in the kitchen. It's like a flat hood vent thing and everything just goes above my head because the counter, even the bar height counter is not tall enough for Phil. Phil gets up, Phil gets on it, Phil opens cabinets, gets into trash, Phil's a mess. So he and once he gets into something, it's on. There's nothing left behind. There, there, there. He's the fucking Manson family. There, there are no witnesses. Everyone in the house is going. Everyone. If he gets into like a chub pack of thirty-five dinner rolls or something, there's not two dinner rolls that are left behind. He doesn't fill up. He does whatever he gets. It's gone. That that's all. He could take. You could leave a 55-gallon drum of Costco garbanzo beans out. He would take out every bean. That's He's relentless, he's remorseless, and he doesn't stop. He will, he will take it all down. And he, I've seen him do it many times. So now it's Christmas party day, and Phil's around. There's lots of food around, and... I don't want Phil anywhere near anything. Sonny goes out for the day and, or what I think is the day. Natalia's out for the day. So I take Phil and I put him in the backyard and I shut the door. No, no in-house privileges for you, Phil. Now I had taken the kitchen food, even though Phil was outside and I still put it all up high. And then I came home about two hours later and Phil was napping on the sofa. I'm like, shit, how'd Phil get in? And then I thought, huh. I went and found Sonny and Sonny's like, oh, I got home five minutes ago. I let Phil in. I was like, they, 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 watch out. Do not let Phil in. So oh, the food's put away. He's snapping on the sofa. I said, okay. This is about two o'clock on the day, Christmas, Christmas party day. Uh, party was at six. I then go, okay, I guess we're good. Um, I had a moment before I left the house. I normally close the door to my office, but 
I sat there in this case and I went, should I close the door? Because if people were going to be coming over and helping set up the party and stuff when I wasn't around and I didn't want my door closed because I didn't want them thinking like I was in there napping or beating off or showering or something like I didn't want them to do the backhand knock, the tentative. Hello. I, see, are you in there? I said, I'm going to leave the door open. So if they're doing stuff, they're not going to think that I'm in there taking a nap or watching TV or something. So I left the door open because Phil was outside. Then I came home and Phil was inside and so was Sonny. I said, I thought you're gone for the day. She said, I would cut it, cut it short. Okay. Look around the kitchen. Everything seems to be in place. Walked into my office. I get one gift a year that I enjoy. The treat gift. You get into my tax bracket. You hang out with Jimmy Kimmel. You'll get a bunch of great gifts. Don't, don't get me wrong. But the one that I always look forward to is the double decker box of C's candy. It's a brick. It's a, it's, it must weigh seven pounds of C's candy. And I, the night before it sat wrapped, it sat wrapped. I was just, it just sat on my desk wrapped box. Now, I don't know if Phil can suss it out when it's wrapped. It's got a thick lid. It's got thick sides. It's wrapped. It just looks like a shoot. It looks like a brick, a box. It doesn't reek of food, doesn't look like food. I knew what it was. The night before, it was like midnight, and I was just staring at that box, and I was like, you know, I'm going to snatch a couple pieces of that seized candy, and I tore the wrapping paper off. I ate five pieces put the lid back on, I set it back on the desk, and I stopped thinking about it because it had been sitting there for a long time. I walked in my office, box on the ground, torn apart, not one piece of chocolate remained, maybe eight or 10 of the little wax paper cups that the chocolates are in were strewn about, all gone. Uh, I went and looked it up. 51 pieces of chocolate. Uh, but you got to back out five. So now we're at uh, 45. Phil took out 45 pieces of chocolate and the cups, the little wrapping cups, and probably 40 of the wrapping cups. Now, it, it's two in the afternoon. People are showing up at six. Phil's going to explode or heave all over the place or then have a seizure. What's going on? So I say, Sonny, you're on this with me. We got to figure this one out. So Sonny calls Olga. Olga calls the local emergency vet office. Uh, they're, they're overbooked. They put us in touch with the canine poison control hotline which is 70 bucks oh 70 bucks 70 bucks by the way let me explain how they how the sagely advice they dispense uh yeah that sounds bad you should take him to the vet <laughs> yeah no shit sherlock that's i i knew that all right so he's on the phone with them for 20 minutes uh, they want to know uh, how long ago did he eat the shit and is he going to digest it now? Of course, I'm doing the sort of, ah, he's fine. You know, Phil, by the way, takes a dip in the pool, comes out. He's rolling around the, the lawn. He's having the time of his life. No worse for wear. I'm sitting there going, OK, but he's going to explode. The people are going to show up to this house. He's going to be vomiting everywhere. And then he's going to go into shock. And then I'm going to have to leave the party and like take him to the vet. Cause he ate 46 pieces, 46 pieces of chocolate. He didn't eat nine. We went well over 40. So I'm like, uh, uh. Uh, so Olga finds a vet that's open in deep Pasadena. Now it's like three in the afternoon and people are showing up. And by the way, I got duties. I'm supposed to be setting shit up at the house and cleaning stuff up and stuff. And I just say, Sonny, get Phil, get in the car. We'll go to the vet. Go to the vet. They're like, he ate 46 pieces of chocolate. Okay. And uh, 
how long ago? It's like uh, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. It's like, all right, we're going we're gonna to induce vomiting. I said, uh, okay. How much does that cost? <laughs> uh, $570. Yeah. So um, we're going to induce vomiting. I say, uh, all right, how's that work? They go, well, we'll, uh, we'll take them to the back. We'll give them an induce vomiting. And uh, we got to, this is, this is the, my favorite part of life. She goes, you know, first we got to put in the catheter. And I go, uh, the catheter? Yeah. I go, you have to catheterize him. Yeah. But then he's going to vomit all over the place, right? Yeah, well, we got to get the catheter in. No. It was like a 40-year-old vet tech lady. I go, catheter? Yeah. But, um, but, the, but why do you need the catheter? She goes, oh, that's how we get the, uh, so we get the, the drugs in him. The catheter. She's just watching me. My the gears grinding my head. I, I go. Um, what, uh, so the drugs are g- going in through his 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 uh, penis. It, the drug goes through his penis. She goes. No, no. Catheter is just the word we use for the tube that goes in this paw. Oh, we go. Okay. Geez. Well, that, that, that's just start using different words, would you, bitch? Please, I like the, the the you know the twenty eighth time I, I go <laughs> cat 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 catheter what 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 with the catheter like feel free to just say intravenous or the you know, I talked to Doctor Drew I I was so pissed off when I saw Drew that night I was like do you ever use the word catheter when you're talking about putting and she's and she's like technically it's correct but nobody ever says that we say intervenous or whatever he he gave me five other popular terms that she could have used she probably says that 11 times a day and has people sitting there going he's he 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 has an ear infection what do we uh yeah no catheter like that's IV, the term drip bag anything yeah any anything anyway they kept saying how much chocolate did he eat? I was like, he ate like forty five pieces of chocolate, man. So look out! And they're like, yeah, okay, go back, come back fifteen minutes later. They're like, oh, he he act. I'm like, good. And they're like, there was a lot of chocolate in there. I said, <laughs> I I told you he ate forty five pieces of chocolate. I told you he ate a double decker box of C's candy they're like yeah man that was a lot and i'm like yes it is because i told you because they get real specific what did he eat how much did he eat how long ago did he eat i like told you three times he ate 40 plus pieces of chocolate so you shouldn't have been surprised but evidently phil booted world class back there just blew all my favorite fucking holiday chocolate all over the fucking floor what pieces did you miss the most Mm. You know, I mean, I got my favorites in there. And I'm I, really upset. I start because I'm always sort of racially based. I start with the lighter chocolate. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've grown to like the weird cherry nougat ones that are just nougaty cherry cherry inside. But I'll, anything with the glazed peanutty thing on the top too. I love them all. That's yeah. that's my whole thing. I I eat them. And, and I'm, I like the surprise part. I like the, I don't know what this one is. I'm, I'm biting, I'm biting into it. But Phil destroyed my chocolate. He destroyed my day. Uh, as soon as he yacked. Oh, by the way, he was fine before he booted and he was fine after he booted. He was he, just Phil. He's a 120 pound dog. He's resilient. He's it's not going to hurt him. fucking yeah. resilient. So, it, yeah. Yes. My, I had a dog a long time ago, uh, a Samoyed, maybe 90, 95 pounds. She ate a one pound bag of Hershey's chocolate kisses. And we had the same debate and we decided, no, we're not taking her to the vet. She seems fine. And she just shit tin foil for a week. She was fine. <laughs> well, if it wasn't Chris, if there wasn't 16 people showing up for a Christmas party in four hours. Explosive diarrhea would be the big fear, yes. I would be sort of like, uh, uh, and also Phil goes into, he has seizures too. So there was that. Anyway, 
two and a half hours and 600 bucks later, Phil had been completely evacuated. And uh, now he was back in, in, in good spirits, but pissed off that he got locked out of the party, which is the uh, only time I've ever heard Phil bark is when he gets locked out. Um, all right. So on a sad note, I should report that uh, Dustin Portman, 43, Dustin Portman is the gentleman that made this beautiful table for us. It's it's spectacular. I was a woodworker. This was above my pay grade. I did not do this fine, fine carpentry. And Dustin was a fine, fine carpenter and a and a, and a woodworker and a good dude too. We talked obviously quite a few times setting up the table. Uh, he passed away December twenty seventh through suicide. And that, uh, that saddens me because he was young, he was good looking and he, he was skilled and it's very, uh, I, when anyone goes, especially through suicide, it's, it's always very sad. Obviously when someone, you know, goes, it's that much more personal, but, um, it's a, uh, you obviously, and you wouldn't have known it if you met him. Um, so there may be someone out there that's going through something and you may want to ask them how they're doing or if they're going through something, because, um, if, uh, if Dustin Portman can take his own life, um, anyone can. And I don't mean that in a Oprah way. I just mean, he, to me, um, and I didn't know him well, but he was very can do. He drove out here from Idaho Falls with yeah, this he delivered the table, table himself. himself. Um, my, and my theory has been shattered because I always say the guys who work with their hands and the guys who have a trade and the guys who aren't sitting around checking the internet all day are much more put together mentally and able to handle things emotionally. But uh, this was definitely bigger than that. His uh, wife, Alania, and his daughter, uh, McKay, and son, Hawken, are left behind. And um, we will uh, tweet the GoFundMe link out there if people would like to help in any way they can at uh, adamcarolla.com. Um, we'll put it up at adamcarolla.com. Obviously, if you'd like to contribute, family expenses, funerals, and the like, yes. Yeah, you said something right there at the beginning that if, if you know someone who you know is is possibly going uh, uh, through a major form of depression like this, the best thing you can do is just pick up the phone and make a phone call because I can tell you that countless lives have been saved by one phone call just saying, hey, buddy, I want to check up on you. Yes, completely. All right. Um, New Year's resolution, uh, I think, is to, well, it was as discussed, <laughs> which is um, stop procrastinating. Um, now, I'm not a traditional procrastinator, but uh, if the uh, not telling the kids their grandma died for seven and a half months is any indicator... I sort of emotionally procrastinate. I don't really procrastinate about, oh, I got to clean out that garage or uh, go uh, take my car in to be detailed or something. I'm pretty good with that. Emotionally, I'll just kick cans down the road like I don't want to deal with the kids and tell them. And what if they start crying? Who knows? I didn't want to get into this. And I, I won't. I'll just I'll just be like, yeah. I mean, again, if you cannot tell your kids that their grandmother died Everything pales in comparison to that. I mean, in terms of emotional procrastination. So I'm going to do a better job of that this uh, this year. All right. So Jay Moore is out there. Um, Dawson. And again, in terms of the format, I'm obviously not going to sit here and talk to my own reflection in the monitor for uh, two hours a day. Um, maybe I told Dawson, pull some news stories at some point, uh, 
Chris will do some trending topics. Well, not today, but you know, we'll we'll keep it loose and modular, and we'll move things around. I have a bunch of other subjects I wanted to get into. Maybe we should just bring Jay Moore in, and I'll bounce these other subjects, sure. these other topics I wanted to get into off of him, and see what he what he has to say. Um, Jay is uh, newly engaged, by the way. We could get into that as well with him. I also have some comedy to do with uh, Jay. His uh, loved his uh, old timey porn star announcer. We'll think we'll revisit that. But oh, we don't even have a mic set up for Jay. We got it. It's under the table. We'll oh, it's it under the table. All right. Let me tell you about another thing that I noticed. Uh, apropos to nothing. I was on vacation, and when you go on vacation, you watch shows you would never watch because you have no control over the TV set. You turn the TV set on, the TV comes on, whatever's on is what you're watching. So I watched about 20 minutes of Let's Make a Deal. Let's Make a Deal was a show that I never watched. I haven't watched in 28 years, but uh, now I'm watching Let's Make a Deal. So I'm watching Let's Make a Deal, and a, a theme emerges, and I'm interested. It's sort of like, for me, everyone says, oh, you, knew, you know America's getting fat when you go to Disneyland, and you see all the fat people walking around Disneyland. And I was like, that's true, but I went to Disneyland and noticed half the employees were fat, and that's what really made us made me realize we are morbidly obese. When the 23-year-old chick who lives in Orange County is working the haunted mansion when she's got a fat ass. I don't care about the tourist from Iowa who's on the Lark scooter. I'm talking about the 23-year-old who works there is now fat. And uh, Jay Moore, good to see you, my friend. My man. Happy New Year, buddy. Good to see you, my friend. Lots to get into. but It's I'm, weird when the princesses get fat. I'm... I'm I yes. saw Fat Snow White. Oh, oh! I didn't mean in costume. Oh, I, yeah. I, really? Fat Ariel. Really? She could put her hands in her pockets naked. Really? She was big, I tell you. I didn't know she <laughs> no, was. The, uh, well, my, my way to remedy that yeah. at Disneyland, as I've discussed, was take half the employees are fat and the other half are thin. Do not let two wide loads hook up together. Hmm. There's no shame, and at some point they have to decide where what to eat for lunch. Eugenics. Take a skinny one and match them with the fat one. Take yeah. that fat one and put them on the other side of the park with the skinny one. Then they can sit there and be fat shamed by the skinny one, hmm. and they're not going to Taco Bell. They're going to have a sensible salad. So like breeding dogs, mm -hmm. you're just going to breed them smaller and smaller. Yes. Until you have a teacup human. That's, that's me, yeah. Eugenics. Margaret... God, what was her last name? Third Reich. Singer. Oh. Margaret what? Singer. Yeah, Singer. Singer, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Jay. Yes, sir. I'm, I'll just finish this and I'll be curious. I'm, All right. I'm watching uh, Let's Make a Deal, and I haven't seen it in 30 years, and I look out. Everyone's dressed in an outfit. They're all fat. Yeah. When I was a kid, those people were not fat. Those people it's were true. skinny and tops. hungry. Tube there was tops. a lot of sexy genies dressed out there and a lot of sexy princesses and everything. <laughs> everything. Now everyone's just a fucking tub of goo. It's like uh, they're really just dressed like Florida chick with huge cans, but she doesn't think we notice her huge arms and huge ass. She just <laughs> accentuates the cans. Everyone was fat. And I thought, oh, we're now officially fat because Let's Make a Deal just represents this cross-section of sort of mid-America. This is just America. When I watched Let's Make a Deal in the 70s, in the, in the bleachers, dressed up or not dressed up, just at that, that was just America. Like, yeah. That was just John well, Q. Public and Sally, uh, Sally Doe. It might be cocaine versus marijuana. The mm. 70s and 80s, everybody was all railed out. Oh, you're right. Because they also drank like Coca-Cola and RC Cola like it was water. It's Coke versus the blunts. Everyone's smoking blunts. They all got, they're all like fat people with dream catchers. <laughs> you're right. A lot, of, a lot of medicine wheels on the back of pickup trucks. Yes, you're right. And the people with dream catchers, they, they seem like they got the most dreaming to do. Yeah. It, yeah. And also, 
I don't know how the dream catcher works, but I would probably, I, I would say. No, you do. I mean, it's in the title, Adam. <laughs> yeah, I know how it's supposed to work, but they never tell you what to do with the dream catcher. The dream the dream catcher catches the dreams. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you un, how do you unhood a we dream? Make, we constantly make deposits into the dream catching how bank. How do you get them out? How do we make a withdrawal? It's like a lobster trap. Like, can you, they get in, they can can't you get soak out. it in vinegar and go, I hope that one where I was fucking the Hooters chick from seven nights ago, like bubbles to the top, like, and let's purge it of all the bad dreams. Like, what do we do? You hold it over baking soda and you shake it. I uh, I had a dream the other day yeah. where I don't remember a lot of my dreams, but I had a dream and the dream seemed a little too easy or too good or whatever. And I was with Mike August and I said to Mike August in my dream, I said, uh, seemed too easy, seemed too good. Uh, you think this is a dream? And he went, no, absolutely not. And I went, <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, now I'm buying it. <laughs> it is interesting, right? You might be the only person... That gets a pass with me, like explaining their dream, because people always want to tell you their fucking dreams. Yes. It's like, hey, that was so boring. You slept through it, right? <laughs> <laughs> why? Why are you putting me through? It took you eight hours with your eyes closed to work your way through that nonsense. You know, uh, I got my son a bass guitar for for Christmas. Smart, he, not drums, bass. Bass. He broke a string already. But I was thinking, as I looked down on my list of things I wanted to talk about, do you uh, you know music really well? You know rock music really well. Do you have a bass guitar song? Like you know, I don't want. He wanted to, he wanted to start with Pink Floyd's Money. I said I, that song's so fucked out. I never want to hear that song again. <laughs> Play the who. Play the who. I want something else. It's funny. I was just texting a buddy of mine. We were texting back and forth like our favorite song, Bass Lines. Really? I got a new tooth, so I'm like, I have a syllabus. Oh, really? Oh, there it is. Like yeah. million, million dollar smile? Yeah. Quarter million dollar wow. smile. Wow. It front tooth or next to front tooth. These are all new. Up. Look, these are all new. These are all new. This is all new. New hair? Yeah, if you go like this. Oh, uh, like, let me check. You feel like the crew cut under there? Yeah. What, how'd you get new hair? I got the surgery. How'd it go? I mean, looks good. Nine and a half hours. A month ago today. Really? Yeah, it just felt like a sunburn. It didn't really hurt. But they... Uh, Nine and a half hours? Yeah. 4,103 holes in my head. I was going to say, I see those commercials. They go, uh, Dr. Scalp said, uh, get a new head of hair. Call now and we'll throw in 100 hairs for free. And I'm like, yeah, but you have to do 10 million. Like, don't you? <clears throat> 4,103. The record in my office, the guy's office was, he said 7,000. Really? Yeah, but I had good hair. See, they take the strip out of the back. They cut your mm -hmm. ear to ear. Mm-hmm. And then they take like a, they peel it off like Velcro. And then ladies go in another room and they separate the follicles from the hair. Then he takes like this thick needle mm -hmm. and he just punctures your head. One at a time. One at a time. And there's a, a nurse next to him going, 1,003, 1,004. Oh, 1, 1, 000. Okay, that's 2,000. When you got home, did Hold you- on. Then you get lunch. Sorry. Then, oh, you, then you get, get lunch. lunch. All right. Uh, then after you eat, you lay back down in the chair. And then there's a nurse on either side of your head and one in the back. And then they plant like bulbs. Mm -hmm. Good word, bulbs. Bulb. They plant the bulb in the thing and then you go home. And you got to sleep sitting up for four days. Oh, really? But I got that adjustable bed, baby. Craftmatic. And when you get to do the move that I see in every one of these commercials where you pop out of the swimming pool <laughs> in slow motion and your hands sail above your head in victory, yeah. and then the hot chick comes up and goes, oh, my God, look at this. She, and she sidles rocks. up to you. She likes running her hand through it. Well, I know the guys always come straight up like uh, Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now. They yeah. never like shake their head like no, normal people. It's they never just an angle either. It's never like they yeah. went and uh, Martin doing Sheen, a lap. Apocalypse Now yeah, just coming out of the water. It just comes up, it, but it's victorious. Yeah, but it doesn't look victorious. No, I swam this morning. I, I get after it. I, I shake oh, my head and I put my arm up in the V. Nice. So you did I the pool the chicks away. <clears throat> yeah, because one will come running with a frothy drink and try to get you to down it. Well, you know me, man. I'm, I'm out of the business. Sorry, That's ladies. Right. Yeah. Genie bus, right? Yeah. Uh, engaged, right? Amazing. Amazing. Wait, were you guys together for like five years? Yeah, she was with me five years. I've been with her two. <laughs> because you weren't sober. <laughs> 
I was a drug addict. I was just out of my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very lucky. She was with me like at my absolute worst and like hung around and watched me get well. And so it's like, now it's, it's victory. Like that's victory, you know? How much of that period do you remember? There's nothing to remember. All I did was snort Adderall, which is the answer to your <clears throat> Disneyland, Middle America problem. Get mm. them all hooked on Adderall. Mm. They'll lose weight pretty quickly. Yeah. And their teeth. Uh, like me. I was so skinny, my nipples were longer. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I was like 170. Is Bing. that what happened with your teeth? They got longer? Mm-mm. They got messed up? Yeah, I, could, I couldn't stand. St- I did. You got to understand how much I did, though. I didn't take like a pill in the morning and just kind of hang out all day. Like I, I did it. I woke up. I snort 15 milligrams. I swallow a 30. And then like an hour later, I would do it again. I just did it all day. And But I was also paddling every day and running wrestling practices every day. It was out of my mind. Is Adderall, what is the intent of? intention of uh, the Adderall, what's it created for? Is it created for kids with ADD or what? what I don't is it? know. I, I, it's a stimulant. Like if you, if you, you would test positive for a stimulant with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was detoxing off of it in the detox, I, I slept for, when I tell you I slept for five days, I slept for five days. I got up to pee go to the bathroom, get a little bit of food, maybe a soda, and just back to bed. You cannot keep your eyes open when you're, when you're detoxing from it. <clears throat> What's it like? <clears throat> what was it like for you to perform during that period? Well, you can see my special uh, Altamont. It was like right before my intervention, which is kind of weird because it's a good special. But it's, um, it's not even performing. Your whole life, when you're on that much stimulant your whole life is a performance because you say something and then the thoughts inside your head is like did that make sense am i making sense is this kind of this is your your perception your disease of perception like everyone's looking at you everyone's thinking this everyone's thinking that what did i say to this person last time it's exhausting so it's just stand up was actually the easiest thing to do because it's i knew what i was going to say there's a <clears throat> i'm sorry there's a little inter- cock in your, a frog yeah, in your throat a little intervention <laughs> Oh yeah, I didn't, yeah. I had there was an intervention at my house March eleventh, twenty twenty one, and an intervention at your own house. That's the worst surprise party ever. Yeah, <laughs> you walk in, they're all like, "Hey," you're like, "Oh, hey, oh no, oh no, no." So you got to tell a drug addict a lie to get them to their own intervention because you can't think a drug addict if you go like, "Hey, why don't you come on over? We're all gonna watch TV." The drug addict's like, "No, that's an intervention." So, right. The lie they told me was, for my podcast back in the day, I was going to interview Wu-Tang Clan. Wow. At my house. Mm -hmm. At 8 o'clock in the morning, I was going to interview Wu-Tang Clan. And I was so high, I believed them. Mm -hmm. I thought Wu-Tang Clan was... Who's them, by the way? Skylar Stone, comedian, Mm -hmm. was the guy that got me in touch, quote-unquote, with RZA. And there was like this Mm -hmm. fake... uh, (laughs) I've never told this before. There was a fake email going back. I was emailing, I thought, RZA mm-hmm. to get the woo right. to my house. <laughs> but it was just Skyler <laughs> typing as RZA, like, boing, 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 right. Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> wow. So, so you, I'm texting RZA, like a genius. And But well, first of all, let's back up. I was so high, they had to lie to me to get me into my own house. How it do, wasn't like go to the rec center down the street. Right, it was no. Right. How do we get him home? How do we get Jay into his living room? I got that that's how frenetic everything right, was all right. the time. So I get, I stay up all night snorting Adderall and smoking weed, and I'm coming up with like the greatest Wu Tang interview ever. Like mm. even Capadonna is going to get a mm-hmm. question. Nobody even knows who that is. <laughs> and I walk into my podcast room at eight in the morning. My producer's there. Jeannie's there. Two of my opening acts are there. My sisters from New Jersey are there. Wow. My business manager's there. My stand-up agent, Matt Frost, is there. My buddy Chappie's there on Zoom. Um, my landlord in Malibu is there. My son's nanny is there with two of her daughters. Wow. And I'm so... Seat fillers or she couldn't find a sitter? Like, no, no. They they're her? all there. What do they need the two daughters for? Because I've impacted their life terribly. Oh, Okay. And I'm so high, the only thought I have at the time is, 
Wow, everybody is really excited to watch me interview Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> that is literally my thought. Mm. The interventionist comes downstairs, and that's the bogey. Right. Once you do a lot of meth, you never really lose that look. Right, right. It's like baggy jeans. It's kind of like this weird surfing skinhead look. He was bald, no teeth. He had pit bulls tattooed to his neck. He had a swastika tattooed to his head, so I'm pretty sure really? he didn't come with Wu-Tang Clan. Right. <laughs> And uh, it was a quick intervention. About eight minutes in, I said, just so you guys know, I'm going. But, right. But I'm an approval addict. That was my first addiction was like everybody's approval as a little kid. So the fastest way to get everybody in the room from shaking their heads, no, like we're all disappointed and scared to, okay, this is good again, was just to agree to go to treatment. And thank God I did. Why did Jeannie hang out with you during that? I, why we, the, She's got options is what I'm saying. Hey, uh, yes, yes. No, I mean, uh, let's, all right, let's be realistic she's about- She's the catch of all catches. I, I would say- She's the Barbie still in the box. Listen, and, unless somebody owns part of the Clippers and is 25 years younger, I, uh, I don't know how you're going to do better than that. Ooh, Clippers. Uh, they're, they're, they're not what they used to be. I mean, they've climbed mm. up a little bit. Uh, no, here's, here's, what I'm, here's what I'm saying. Um. People talk about love and they, they talk about love at first sight and they talk about soulmates and shit like that. But, you know, when you're Brad Pitt and you're Jennifer Aniston and you want to, or Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt or something, each one is acutely aware that they have options, like a lot of options. And it's a little easier to break up when there's... The, the girlfriend that you met in high school that's got no options and is put on the weight and is a little long in the tooth and whatever, they don't tend to flee as fast because they have less options. I mean, it's really like pe it's people, it's like people with jobs. There's people that work at the Hormel factory canning hams, and they're not as apt to tell their boss to fuck off versus guys that are really successful who don't take a lot of shit because right. they got options. Yeah. They, they realize they can go places. Jeannie Buss has more options than any woman alive. So she stuck it out with you when you were someone that was... Uh, uh, you, it must have been very difficult to have a relationship with you during that period. That That's First, pretty the amazing. The parenthetical of this entire conversation is she's the hot one in the relationship. I get that. But I don't know if you saw this tracksuit I'm wearing today, it's, Adam. It's, this is worth hanging out for. Yes, it is. It is amazing. It's got stains on it. It's very 70s. can't get out. No, I'm saying a sober Jay Moore. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Because she met me sober. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went down a rabbit hole. I met her right after my divorce, and I, I went down. I just was so consumed with resentment. I use drugs at people. Oh, interesting. Because I've learned in my recovery, I'm not very good at establishing boundaries. So you cross a boundary that I haven't told you about, then I use drugs because I'm resentful towards you for crossing that boundary, and then I'm in my own personal hell. Is, is the sobriety across the board, pot, oh, yeah, drinks? Yeah. At Anything that affects me from the neck up. Although That's the good. hair place... <laughs> they do give you a 10 milligram Valium. Oh, really? Cause, and I, but I did ask my sponsor, because you got to run things by your sponsor. And he goes, mm -hmm. take it. My sponsor, by the way, you have no idea. This guy, look, he, he's Yoda and Yosemite Sam combined. Cal I, just, I just came up with a sitcom, which is Hollywood drug sponsor. Oh, because, dude, it's not about you, dude. <laughs> because he's getting calls saying... I'm over at the hair restoration place. They have a Valium that they oh, want no, to give I, me. It was weeks out, I told him, and he just went, take it. But it's a very Hollywood sponsor thing. When you're in Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Hair restoration. <laughs> you're getting calls where a guy like, I'm at my sister-in-law, and she's serving something called rum cake. Now, it's got raisins in it, but I don't know if it's a rum raisin cake. I don't know if it's made of rum. What should I do? Like, yeah, they're, yeah. they're having those. Not, I'm in the Beverly Hills. What about a non-alcoholic beer? Yeah. It's That's called non-alcoholic people, buddy. It's called near beer, but I don't know how close it is to beer. It says yeah, it's yeah. near, but yeah. I don't know how close it is. But Hollywood this guy's getting, he's getting questions about cosmetic dental surgeries, yeah. about having porcelain crowns put on. And 
if you're a if you're sort of semi in the business sponsor, you're going to get a lot of questions about plastic surgeries and anesthesia and that you know that kind of stuff. I'd imagine. Yeah, well, when I got my penis reduction surgery, <laughs> that's right. I get, the second time, the second. <laughs> That's right. Because I don't jump rope anymore. <laughs> you know who should be your fucking sponsor? Ooh. Jay Leno. Mm-hmm. You know why? Why's that? Because he sat in that chair you're sitting in, showed me pictures of his face burnt off. God bless And him. said, uh, no, was, no, they didn't take any pain pills. They, they wanted them to take pain pills. He wasn't getting his hair fixed. He was getting his face reattached to himself. And he's like, no, nah, I didn't. I, I, I was painful, but I didn't want to take them. Jay's been good to me, man. Has he? Yeah, I did 22 Tonight shows with him. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got a little post-it note next to my bed framed. It, it's just a producer walked over and handed it to Jay, my last appearance, and said, this is Jay's 22nd appearance. Mm-hmm. And I had it framed. I thought that was, like, really blew me away. But anytime they had a politician on, they didn't know if it was going to go funny or not or it was going to mm-hmm. stink, so they had me come in second because they could rely on me to just kind of kick out the jams. And you got onto their short list of guys who could come on short notice. I was just Buddy Hackett. Yeah. Well. You could do Buddy Hackett. Well. All right, I'll be Jay Leno. You be Buddy Hackett. Okay. Uh, uh, Buddy, I was talking about uh, (laughs) Jay Jay, Jay Moore. (laughs) Jay Jay Moore, funny guy. What do you think, uh, Buddy? Well, he's a real good guy. And you know what the fly said when he walked over the mirror? Yeah, what did he say? He said, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Anytime good. I don't feel so good, mm. I remind myself of the Siamese twin mm. whose brother is gay, mm. whose boyfriend is coming over and they share an asshole. <laughs> then I don't feel so bad. Hey, uh, I loved you in the Mad, 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 Mad World. Uh, oh, yeah? It's a funny movie. It's a good picture. Yeah, it's a good picture. Oh, to be in Nagasaki where the women chew the bucky and the men say, whoa, wacky, whoa. <laughs> and scene. Did you know Elton John was gay? No. no, 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 no. Am, I in, am I doing Jay Leno? Not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you're supposed to say yes or no. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know what, Buddy Hackett, you want Intervention. To let me get some Buddy Hackett's out real quick. Please. When I went to Buddy Hackett's uh, house to sit Shiva after he died, I pull up in the circular driveway on Whittier, and Bob Newhart, who I've only met one time in my life, comes like jogging towards my car, and he puts his arm through my arm. He goes, Jay, uh, thank God you're here. I thought I was going to have to uh, spend the afternoon w- with uh, Har- Harvey Corman. Mm. <laughs> he just wanted to be away from Harvey Could Corman. Could you do worse than Harvey Corman? They hated Harvey Corman. Really? We call them nimbles. What? Yeah, we call them nimbles. Nimbles. Why do you call them nimbles? Throw them a joke. Mm. He'll drop it. Wow. I, remember, I said something about Gregory Peck, and Hackett goes, yeah, then after that, he goes to the carpenter and gets a suit made. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy that you went, you sat Shiva at his funeral? Hackett was like a father to me. I hung really? out with him all the time. <clears throat> we did action together and Paulie. I didn't know that. Yeah. Dear friend, dear, I met Buddy Hackett after I knew everything. So it was kind of like one of those Kung Fu cones, like, koans, like, you know, my glass is full and he just keeps pouring. I had to get rid of everything I thought I knew. And he filled me back up. What kind of guy was he? He was, oh, I got him at the end of his life and he was wonderful. And he was aware of the fact that he was like super bullheaded his whole life. But he would say things to me like, where did, we did the MTV, (laughs) we did the MTV awards together. We co-presented, and then we presented separately. And I got to introduce Buddy Hackett to Redman from wow. the rapper. And just <laughs> Redman was so excited to meet Buddy Hackett, and Buddy Hackett just looks at him and goes, "Hello, Redman." <laughs> like he was, a, like he couldn't know if he could trust him. He just came off the trail in a wild west. Um, I wanted- oh, but he goes, "Where did you walk when you went on stage?" I go, "I went to the microphone." He goes, "Why?" I go, because that's where everybody walks. He goes, right. You didn't see me go to the microphone. Walk in front of the microphone. I point to a guy in the front row that probably paid for parking. Mm -hmm. His wife gave him a near Mm beating. Then I go on to the other end of the stage. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow, there's people at the other end of the stage, too. I go over, I shake a hand over there. Then I go behind the microphone, and that whole room comes behind the microphone with me. 
Wow. Never walked to a mic since. Sagely. Yes. I was, uh, I want to hearken back to something that I've... Intervention you want to talk about more. I did. And but... why is Jeannie Buss sticking with the drug <laughs> addled Jay more? Yeah. But in the spirit in which it's intended. Mm -hmm. the, what I'm interested in, the scariest part of life or the worst part of life, and I've said it before, is the part where things dawn on you. And I've used the example that the worst part about getting your car stolen is not before you know your car is stolen, you think you own a car, and then after you know your car is stolen, you sort of go into action mode, like, I got to call the insurance. The worst moment is when you go, I thought I parked it by this palm tree. And then this thing dawns where you go, my car, uh, when it hits you. Yeah. And I don't think, like, I think if it's, if, if your wife cheats on you, it's not before you know, and it's not after you know, it's as you're finding out this weird moment. I, I'll give you an example. Many years ago, I was hanging out with Jimmy Kimmel. We had a poker party at my house when I was a bachelor, and, and we were cleaning up like an old gay couple in front of the sink, and he was up there, you know, entering, taking little bowls that had guacamole and stuff, and he was just staying clean before, before he left. And he was sitting there, and I've told this story, but not to you. Uh, I had a can, Trader Joe's cylinder of whole bean coffee, but there were like three beans floating in the bottom of it. And uh, it was back when people didn't drink good coffee. It's like 2000, you know, 1998 or something. You'd have to go to Trader Joe's. It was like a treat. You wouldn't get it at McDonald's. There weren't Starbucks everywhere. And I, I was standing there. He was standing with his back to me at the sink doing the dishes. And I had a big old fart because we'd been eating nachos and shit all night, you know, and drinking beers and stuff. And I popped the cap on this cylinder. Uh, you know, looked about five inches wide and about nine inch tall and I just planted it on my ass as hard as I could and I even gave it half a turn to like get a little <laughs> airlock going and I just blew a huge fart into this and I snapped the cap on immediately and I said Jimmy you ever smell the whole Sumatran roast like a real <laughs> coffee bean you know from Africa and he went yeah popped, he popped the <laughs> lid and he didn't gingerly sniff it he shoved it up to his face because when you're trying to sniff three beans at the bottom of a coffee can you give a big inhale and he gave a big inhale and then he lowered the can and it was that moment it was a moment where he lowered the can it was a moment where he didn't know what was going on but something horrible had just happened and after that he just ate my fart and he was laughing and he was yelling at me or whatever but it was that it wasn't as the can was going to his nose, he was full of positivity. Yeah. And he was the guy who knew where his car was parked. You know what I mean? <laughs> and as he inhaled, it was that one beat of, my car's gone. Like that <laughs> moment. That's that this, moment. This and you, you had to have that with Wu-Tang and an intervention. You had to be like, I'm interviewing Wu-Tang and what are all these people doing here? They're going to watch me. And then at some point, the guy at the cargo shorts comes down the stairs. Yeah. But five minutes later, you're saying, I'm doing this. Yeah. Like, you have context. Yeah. It, there's focus. It's the moment when it dawns, right? Isn't that the worst that just, it's three seconds. Yeah. It, it, it's, an intervention is, well, it's life-changing for sure. It could go either way, you know, it, but it's also the, the humility, the humiliation that you're actually sitting in your own intervention mm -hmm. because you really, really thought you had everything under control. And if you, I took a lie detector test five minutes before that intervention, I would have told you I was all right. Right. And when everyone you love is sitting there crying and they're shaking reading their letters because they're afraid you're going to oh. tell them to go fuck off oh the letter reading oh buddy oh. It, it was awful couldn't we just kind of do the reader's digest version of the intervention I like i just be like i'm go, i'm gonna go get in the van i'm gonna sit out in the van i did avoid their bottom their consequence 
letters. If you don't agree to go to treatment. Oh, okay. You can avoid that. I Because I if they read those, I think I would have died a junkie. Oh, people crying, hands I would have died a junkie. Oh I wouldn't God. have gone. I would have been so angry at them. Like, you, what? You're going to change the locks? What? Right, right. Oh, you're not going to work for me anymore? So like, you had to sit through all the, here's what you've done. Here's how you've impacted my life with your drug use. Letters. Yeah. And I found oh, out when any of them were visiting me, they were really doing welfare checks on my son. Oh, and that was so oh, humiliating. Oh, my God. Yeah. But none of that was the tipping point. The tipping point, and this is, you know, the whole point of a 12-step program is you got to smash your ego. You have to demolish the ego. It's, a, it's stripping down because my will got me into my intervention. My will stinks. Mm-hmm. My will is a bad, bad route. So we give it over to a higher power, right? Whatever that is for you. And when Matt Frost, when Frosty, when he said he wouldn't put me on the road anymore, that was the, whoa, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going, I'm going. Right. It wasn't like uh, the genie said she's going to move somewhere else. Um, it, it wasn't, you know, the nanny and uh, my brother Aaron saying like, no, we, we're just checking on your son to make right. sure he's okay. We've been trying to get him out of the house for like two years. That's why there's so many sleepovers. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't any of that. It was when my ego got dinged. Mm. When I wasn't going to be the center of attention on stage anymore, it was, whoa, I'm going. Because mm. I don't know how to do anything else. I don't know. I, I got my son a PlayStation for Christmas, and it's still sitting there plugged into this, a blank television screen because I don't know how to do it. So I got a buddy coming over to handle it later tonight. I will. Uh, how long did the thing take? The whole intervention was probably a half hour. Mm. And and no looking back. Were you, were oh. you relieved when you were? I kept so many secrets. I kept the fact that I wanted to get well and get better a secret too. Wow. I used to pray that I that I could just be out of this obsession, but I just I couldn't. I couldn't do it. And so I was. It, look, it, when you're out of options, the only option left is a pretty damn good option. So I was. They brought my bottom to me the way it's supposed to be. Like you are out of options. And then I found out that everybody at my intervention in the past, say, three years, after you and I were in Malibu, so it was about a year after that is when I got really got going. Uh, I learned that for like three years going backwards, everyone that was at my intervention had tried an intervention at a previous time, and it just fell through. Like they couldn't rally the troops for whatever mm-hmm. reason. That's humiliating, dude. Because yeah. you really think you got it all covered and you're snowing everybody and you got your pills hidden over here and the, this and that and I'll smoke weed with the window open and hey, what's the big deal? It's not a problem. And then you find out, no, it's such a problem. Like we, we hate our lives because of you. How did you get all those pills? Uh, I had two dealers, dealers. and I, I had a prescription from a uh, psychiatrist. How much is that shit you think is bootleg now? I don't want to find out. But I had some meth Adderall for sure. You could tell. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but when they started talking about it in treatment, like this could happen, that could happen. Chinese like, lab stuff. I remember like snorting Adderall and like it just felt like somebody put like a trunk on my chest. Like, oof. Did, how long were you in uh, treatment? Uh, I was in treatment for two months. Wow. Yeah, I went to two different ones. I went to one in Orange County and then there was a Zoom call with uh, the men that were at my intervention and I thought they were going to congratulate me because I was coming home. And they were like, great, now you can go to this other rehab. Wow. And I was livid. I flipped the table over. I threw a water bottle at my counselor because I was, you know, emotionally sober. I was ready to come home. <laughs> wow. But my buddy Chappie from Boston goes, JJ, the bus broke down. But they didn't fix the bus. They just kept their eyes on it. All right. This next place is going to fix the bus. Wow. And I, that's where I learned I was evicted from Malibu. And that's where Frosty again said, I'm still not going to put you on the road. And I was like, uh, okay. When are you getting married? Do you uh, have a date? I don't know yet. Maybe April. Play segue. <laughs> Just changing gears in the bus. And that's when I knew I wanted to live. When are you getting married? <laughs> How big is that prenup? Uh, probably a few chapters. And I <laughs> thank God because we need it. I don't want her stealing my jokes. Oh, yeah. She's pretty notorious. I told her. I said, you Her better... and Mencina. Those are the two. I mean, I can't say anything about comics. Her I love and them. Carlos Mencia. It's one of the funniest men I've ever ever seen in my life, Carlos Mencia. I did a show 
in Chicago. It was John Campanera, me, and Carlos Mencia for re- for firemen in Chicago. Mm. Campanera's from Chicago. He goes out first, does a half hour. I go out second. I do a half hour. We both destroy. There's a thousand firemen. Mm-hmm. Carlos goes out, does an hour. Nobody knew who we were two minutes in. He was. It was one of the best sets I've ever seen in my life. Really? It was. I'll defend that guy to the death. He, I don't know anything about the uh, story or him or anything. Yeah. Just aside from the story, like I, what I saw with my own eyes was definitely his stuff and he was brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, speaking of comedy, I was, uh, there's two things I was, I was listening to uh, during the, I don't listen to this podcast, but I do listen to the Ace Awards compilation that we play throughout the Christmas break. It was an honor not to be nominated. <laughs> Everybody says uh, that uh, you got you got no, no, no. you got screwed. I'm not joking. It was an honor not to be nominated. It was like when Michael Jordan didn't win the MVP because they just had to give it, so they give it to Barkley. Mm-hmm. I I know I knew, I knew what was up. Yeah, and I was listening to you. There's actually. I was listening to the uh, old timey porn st- porn star. She's a real ra- looker. Ra- I, that was making me laugh. But the the part where I really realized the brilliance of Jay Moore is there was this one we did. Couple, I feel like it was a few years earlier, and I was talking about the difference between Los Angeles and going out on the road. As you know, you got the, it struck me once when I was with Dr. Drew and I was out on the road and we stopped at some gas station in Wisconsin, you know, and we like walked in and there was a, we need to use the bathroom and the blonde chick behind the counter was like, oh, right away, go ahead, there you go. And that versus the L.A., you know, steely, yeah, it's broken. eyed, foreign guy who's Can't yelling, not for we, you. No, we, we don't have one. Right, right. But we were doing that and we we're doing role playing and you were supposed to do the Iranian, Iraqi, whatever, Pakistani guy, somebody behind the counter who was yelling at me in an accent that I couldn't use the bathroom but you morphed into the Hispanic Raiders fan hey, bro. Who, who was behind me who wanted to buy cigarettes or something. Yeah. And so you were doing the guy behind the counter, the foreigner, but kept going into the Chicano guy behind me who was the Raiders fan who I just— I just want my camel crush. I just love that guy. I, don't I love know, him too. I don't know why. I love that guy. I, I I love hanging out with those dudes too. Yeah, they, they tell you what's up. Like if you play the dozens with those guys, and like when you get a little too close, to the, they'll go, "Hey man, that's enough." <laughs> <laughs> they just tell you. The thing that always cracks me up about those guys too is I I work <laughs> I employ one of those guys. It's kind of his name is Jose. He's, you know, heavy set. You know, can't tell how old he is because he's dark and he's heavy and he's got like the right facial hair and stuff like that and every year he doesn't go every year but one year we're going to pebble beach for the monterey concorso italiano the 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 race at laguna seca it's a big it's a high roller weekend of super rich car guys and Jaguars having a party and Bentley's having a party and they rent out huge homes all along Pebble Beach along the the 18th hole or whatever and they're serving caviar and champagne and he's one of these guys where you have to like tell him look you need a shirt with a button on it like you can I know you wear these weird shants and a black t-shirt Every single day, but you gotta understand, we're going to the Cadillac party. What about my shower shoes? <laughs> no, you can't use the shower shoes. But so the Raider shower shoes. I know, but this you need laces like this. This is a regular size nine. Okay, but 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 this is a party with rich people put on by Jaguar. Jules gonna do an acoustic set. They're serving hors d'oeuvres, and uh, they, they, they there's gonna be. There's going to be a, a cutting station for roast beef. You you have to wear something that has like a collar <laughs> or a cuff or something on. We told him before we like. Wait, how do you know this guy? He works with me. He's a okay. mechanic. Okay. But we tell these guys like, look, 
I know it's not what you normally do, but we're going to a place and we're going to these parties and you have to bring a shirt with buttons. Even the fact that we have to tell you that we're going to Monterey to Pebble Beach where comes downstairs. You know, we're getting ready to head to the Rolls Royce party. Black T-shirt. Just a black fucking T-shirt. It's 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 at night. We're going out for like champagne and hors d'oeuvres at the Rolls Royce bar. They've hired models to walk around. It's like black T-shirt. And I'm like, Jose, he tells me it's a new shirt. No, this is my new shirt. Home. <laughs> it's his new black shirt. Yeah. The, but, they, <laughs> but what he puts happened? It, he puts but a, what do you do on funerals? But then he puts a quadruple <laughs> XL Andre oh, Ethier right. jersey over it. <clears throat> like, right. and a jacket. Yeah, right. I, I, I anyway. was in, there was a lot of vatos <clears throat> in my rehab. Oh, there were. Yeah, and I remember this one guy. <clears throat> we're all sitting in like a day room, next to like where the counselors are, and just from behind a closed door, you hear, "You don't even know me." I say, "Fuck <laughs> you!" Wow. Fuck you! You don't even know me. I say, and the guy comes out. And he goes, "That guy called me a relapser." <laughs> I'm a Daniel. Wow. He called me a relapser. He doesn't even know me. Wow. He thought a relapser was a gang. I love that guy. I've worked construction with those Armando dudes. Armando was my roommate uh-huh. in rehab. Armando. And if he didn't roll the R's, he corrected you. I go, good morning, Armando. He goes, hey, bro, it's Armando. Armando. Hey, sorry. <laughs> wow. Those guys were up at 4 a.m. with the Bible open, taking notes. Oh, yeah. I was like, okay. No, I installed closets at Always Better Closets with a bunch of ex-gangbangers from hey, Born Again Christians. you sit with us Christians. today, homie. Yeah. You sit with us today. It's so weird. Weirdly quiet, but we'll stab you if they have to. Hey. That's a statement. I do what I got to do. Yeah, I know. Where's my camel crush? Um, all right, so wedding coming up maybe April. I know. You don't know my impression of the gay Latino guy? No. I'm Masuardo. <laughs> and like, listen, let's go to the club. Because mm. there's like girls there. Well, so many beautiful girls, but like the stupid boyfriends, who cares, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you ask me eventually, just ask Waldo, ask me if I'm gay. Uh, it's Waldo. Yes. Are you gay? I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. Am I gay? I'm a man. You, uh... I'm a man. Hold on. <laughs> you want to try some of the... Anyway, I was listening to 1920s movie premiere porn mm. star announcer, and it was it was just making me laugh so hard. And Thank I made you. you a little cheat sheet. I wrote down a couple of porn star names. I like that on you guys thought I would need the cheat sheet. <laughs> uh, but I also... It couldn't, it couldn't hurt. You know you watch too much porn when you recognize a guy by his balls. Mm. That's a bad sign. Tell me if this is gay. When I was in high school, I could recognize all of my friends by their dick. Is that gay? I'm a man. <laughs> really? All right. What Dawson? about Ray? <clears throat> yeah? Did you even Ray? All of them. I knew everyone's dick. <laughs> How? Oh, you went to North Hollywood High. You guys were just <clears throat> swinging, right? You guys changed and like uh, showered? Did we, you guys shower after <clears throat> PE? We did a lot of things together that mm. it seemed gay. Why don't you tell me about it? Oh my god! I mean, I I knew what everyone's. I wrote a song about my friend's dick. It was just always out. Did you Did you guys ever like <clears throat> masturbate around each other? Oh yeah, <laughs> we had to. Ookie cookie. <laughs> No. No, that's taking it too far. Yeah, come on, we're not weirdos. No, we would. <laughs> <coughs> what it. <clears throat> what it was, maybe a little beyond high school, is nobody had a VCR, nobody had any porn, no one had any anything. So, But we did have a friend who had a VCR and a porn. And what we would, what we would end up doing is, at first it'd be like, eh, clear out. I'm, I'm having a session. And then my buddies would go like, you clear out. And then the other buddy would go like, I'm not leaving. You guys leave. It was this big argument of like, who's clearing out so the other guy can have some alone time and that's watch called, his that's porn. That's Mexican cock off. That's right. And at some point, everyone just went, well, fuck it then. Then we just beat off together. Yeah, yeah we didn't hook arms. <laughs> Indian <laughs> leg wrestle. Often. Often. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, we were, you know, it's tasteful and discreet. But uh, yeah, how, how? What is? Ex- <laughs> explain tasteful and discreet to me. Like set the scene for me. What? There wasn't Slow, a lot of slowly. You would keep your eyes focused on the TV set. There wasn't a lot of eyeballing. Did you like, um, like, just pull open the sweatpants and go down, or were you guys out and about? No, out and about. All right, had to be. Well, I, I yeah. can honestly say, I, yeah, I avoided that somehow. You know what any of your friends' dicks look like? No. Well, oh, wow. Yeah. Not by lack of trying. <laughs> yeah, sure. You gotta try. You know why? I'm not suburban because you're a man. I'm a man. That's right. Am I gay? I'm a man. Do you have a? Uh, do we have the music or trying to do this because we're shifting things around a little? Welcome. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the grand opening of Blackthroat. Blackthroat. Starring Peter North. <laughs> He's a fine young actor, brand new to the scene. And boy, does he pack a wallop. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, friends. My eyes. You just want me to just start talking? I don't know. The star of Bound and Gagged, Ginger Lynn. K. Parker, and that sensation. <laughs> I just realized you asked me to do nothing, and I just jumped on a live grenade. Like, here we go. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> for the listener, I walk in, and one of the interns, or I don't know what you call these guys. Mm-hmm. One of the Corolexes. Lackeys. One of the lackeys hands me a printed piece of paper formatted 80s porn stars female porn stars with actress and two of their hits that's right like christy canyon i like to be watched and hollywood starlets like because those are the two ones we all remember her by Uh, these guys don't these guys are young and they don't know anything about 80s porn and they have tracy adams who's hot by the way uh she stars wimps. in Wimps. I'm wimps. First off, it's not even a porn title. Whoever picks that out needs that to get should a be better... with uh, roommates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Jerry and... Butler opus. <clears throat> I know what his dick looks like. Jerry Butler. Yeah, I just remember Buck Adams had a lisp. Mm-hmm. Harry Reams was like an old man, right? And I don't know who Long Don Silver is. I thought that was a fish restaurant. <laughs> uh, Harry Reams was. In Deep Throat, who he now sells real estate in like Simi Valley. And you thought he looked like an old man because he had a mustache, which was not as common in the 80s for sure. He was a 70s, 80s guy, Harry Reams. And also, you know, it was always funny. <laughs> I always liked it when they did like a period thing where the, they needed a guy to Peter North to play like a 70-year-old guy or something. They just put talcum powder. <laughs> yeah, the old uh, high his, school play in trick. His, in his hair, but his body was still tan and hairless and chiseled. I was at an Angels game once with Bruce Smirnoff, and Bruce Smirnoff brought... The comedian. Yeah, he brought Peter North. Oh. And he goes, no matter what you do, don't bring up his jizz. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> Instant fist fight. Really? I'm like, well, now I got to bring it up. Yeah, she's called the decorator. Oh, my God. Did you bring it up? No, it kind of just gave me the creeps. Bruce Smirnoff. Uh-huh. What is he up to? Is he alive? Oh, yeah, he's in Florida. He's working. I didn't. I haven't heard his name in a million years. God, uh, I you're... saw him at the Sportsman's Lodge, and I laughed so hard because he's he, he had like a slideshow, but instead of slides, he had giant like cardboard... Uh, Card pieces, cardboard. Like mm-hmm. instead of like a slide, he had like giant pieces of cardboard. Sportsman's Lodge was this. I get. Is, is it still there? I don't know. I, I, this is the only time I come to the valley. I went to a wedding there. You did? Ask Jeannie if she wants to do the Sportsman's Lodge. Do it how? She says hello. By get, the way. get married there. Get married there. It's, it's people get married there. I went to. Yeah, you know, it's a little lower end, but. You Over know, the line. Times are tight. Over the line. I love Jeannie. Mm. Over the line. Sportsman's Lodge wedding. Went to a Sportsman's Lodge wedding there. And Bert, Bert, uh, Bert uh, Bruce Smirnoff goes, I, my mother died of Alzheimer's disease. And in her will, she left me $80,000. I never knew she had it. And I was so touched. I decided to donate all that money to Alzheimer's research. And the crowd goes, oh, and they applaud. He goes, but instead, I got hair. 
<laughs> and he pulls the slide, and he's got like an 80s Jufro. Wow. It's the most amazing thing. <laughs> I got hair. Is he gay? No. It just sounds... Oh, yeah, he's just, he's just affected. Like, he's, he's, just, he's Bruce. Uh-huh. Are you doing... Uh, you, want, you, you're tired of uh, 80s porn? No, I just guy. need a little guidance, a little direction. Uh, all right, let's say. Let's say we're at the opening of the Taboo series. Oh, man. Yeah. You realize I'm getting married soon, and this is like being vetted for vice president. <laughs> well, we can go butt man <laughs> with Jamie Gillis. What about 21 Hump Street? Not as good as the book. <laughs> Sex freaks. Black throat. <laughs> Black throat. We meet the, uh, maybe it's All the premiere. Up. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Welcome, friends. It's me, Donnie Grant. Coming to you live at the premiere of Lust of Blackula, starring Ron Jeremy, who's also oh. the star of 21 Hump Street. Not as good as the book, but oh, it's full of surprises. Here comes Peter North, star of Blackthroat. No, that's not the movie. He has cancer. <laughs> we even got uh, flash bulbs popping. Just one. Sounds like a beer opening. Just one. It's like we gotta work it out. They're taking pictures of a chalk outline. <laughs> There's just one guy. Kink. <laughs> Kink. Wow. Hold your horses, friends. Here comes Nina Hartley. The star of every woman has the star of every woman has a fantasy too. T O O. <laughs> Nina Hartley, there she goes. Look at her. Strutting her stuff around town. Oh, watch out! Peter North! He's gonna blow! <laughs> Down goes Ginger! <laughs> Down goes Ginger! Vanessa Del Rio stepping over the body of Nina Hartley, who now looks like a painter's radio. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Painter's Radio. That, I think I heard it here. I thought you were the first person to say it. Oh, that's the greatest line ever. Anyone who I painted for quite a while, <laughs> and anyone who's ever seen a painter looks like any Van Helen's guitar. Yes, crazy. Um. All right. So, oh, Sonny's bass. What were you gonna say? Oh, I don't know. I if you, as long as you're talking about great. Bass licks. I love sympathy for the devil. Trying to figure out what to tell him to learn. If he learns that, he's he's a fucking genius. Ow! All right. Uh by the way, I should give I should gave some uh Jay some uh plugs, by the way. Stand up dates. You can find the live dates. On uh, Jay Moore, there's an H in there. Jaymore.com, stand up special, Altamont as well. Streaming on uh, Amazon, YouTube, Watch Apple. Watch Jay TV. Moore High. <laughs> Watch Jay Moore High, and this is live stand up special. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Big, uh, so we doing a big wedding? Uh, where do you stop those invites? I don't know. The 99 Lakers? Yeah, Smush, oh. Smush Parker's oh. niece wants to come. Oh my God, I forgot she's got to invite everyone who ever s stepped into the forum. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, you got to keep it small. The shareholders. <clears throat> oh my God, not even my stand-up and AA crew. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, the list is too deep, too wide. I'm trying to get it done quick before she figures this all out. <laughs> Well, is this something, I mean, being together for five years, you must have discussed this at some point. Yeah, but talk is pretty cheap, you know? When you're high? No, just if you talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, until you get on your knees and give that ring, you're just talking about it. Mm. Oh, you proposed to her. Interesting. What? You're Jay Moore. Come on. Hey, you when you propose to me? <laughs> I'm just trying to make amends for the comments <laughs> earlier. What the fuck's she doing no, with I you? No, I agree with you. Comments. What the fuck's she doing with you? Well, look at me, dude. That is awesome. Now, what do you got? Do you, when you get married to someone, you know, <laughs> you know, like when a kid goes missing, they can electronically age them. Oh yeah. So I think maybe she just put teeth in my mouth. She had that app. 
Mm. Where she could age me with hair in my head and teeth in my mouth. Oh, she went the reverse. Yeah. Maybe. This is what he would look like now. Abducted in 1989, <laughs> but this is what he would look like now. Oh. They never they never add weight to him though. They just put crow's feet and thin the hair out a little bit. I would put I'd put a little weight on that kid. You sound like You sound like Fred uh from Best in Show. <laughs> Why am I blanking on his last name? Fred, Willard. Fred Willard, like you think they put a hat on the dog? <laughs> Boy, look at that owner. He cuts cuts to Jane. <laughs> What's Jane's last name? Lynch. Jane Lynch. He goes, you see that owner? That's a happy fellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's been on a lot lately. I love uh, Fred Willard. You, th you think the dogs know <laughs> what's at stake? Fred Willard was that guy. He's I mean, the best. He was... I went with him in Houston and ate the worst barbecue food I've ever eaten in my life. And really? And he, he was delighted. Buy it. He was, you know, they, they, you know, they give you the, in Houston. They give you like stacks of white bread when you order barbecue because mm. you're not fat enough, you know. And he was just taking <laughs> them and wait wiping it today. into the sauce and eating it and going, "This is the best ever." And everyone hated it, and he fucking loved it. When I was at the Acme Theater all those years ago, he would just wander in, like, and <clears> just <throat> sit down and be like, "I'm going to watch an improv show." And we'd be like, "Is that Fred Willard from Fernwood oh, tonight?" Enjoy the art form. Yeah. I, it was, Wouldn't it be good you took one of those bloodhounds, you gave him one of those little hats, it and was, you give him a pipe and make it look like there's smoke coming out? <laughs> Just like you said, make it look like there's smoke. Not smoke coming out. Make it look must, like there's smoke coming out. He must have been improvising that. Uh, well, whole. yeah, the guy, the other guy cracks a lot. Oh, right. Peace Rock, bass by Ray Neapolitan. Good job, listeners. Yes, that was, uh, that was Chris. So... Um, Ray Neapolitan was savage. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Sampled by Third Bass, the Cactus. Hmm? That bass line is sampled by rap group Third Bass. Oh, oh, really? The Cactus. Dun, 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 dun. You know, we had Dave Chappelle as a Wu-Tang member call in and book an Airbnb. I don't even believe it. You Adam don't believe Carolla. it? I don't believe it, Adam Carolla. Uh, Chris will find... 30 seconds of oh, it. I love Chappelle so much. Chappelle. Did you see his SNL? Oh, he's great. You Ch know what I never stole from work? Work. <laughs> <laughs> Chappelle as a member of the Wu-Tang Clan, which I kept thinking about when you were talking about interviewing the Wu. This, there's been obviously more than one hoax uh, <laughs> with the Wu-Tang Clan as the, as the base of the hoax. Can I hear it? Yeah, I think... Uh, what we're tracking. Uh, they'll take them out. They'll take them out. As we say in show business, efforting. Oh, do we call it efforting now? Efforting. Let me ask you uh, another. Like you can't get an actor out of his trailer. It's like, we're so-and-so efforting. Really? Yeah. Is that what it comes? And are you going to be doing Winning Time? Tomorrow. Really? Yeah. You're playing. I love that series, by the way. It is awesome. Playing Michael Cooper. Huh? Playing <laughs> 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 Michael Cooper. <laughs> You're the best. You That's got, awesome. You spin a lot of plates, and when I get through those plates to you, it makes, <laughs> huh? That was, <laughs> I, I thought you played like Michael Cooper's agent or no, something. No, I play Kareem's. And I thought uh, you misspoke. I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say, so mm. I'm, I'm going to show restraint of pen and tongue. But you will be on that series. Yeah. Jay's a great actor. I mean it sincerely. And... I think, and I love that series. Me I just too. watched the shit out of that. How the fuck did John C. Riley not get an Emmy nomination? Even like it's it's amazing. I have no idea. I don't know who else was nominated, but he should have been. He was fantastic in that. And uh, so, for you, once you get married, do you just live a lavish life i mean how, how does this how's this work just put my feet up and light cigars with well, I, bills. no i mean you're you love the you love working you light love the cigars road. with season tickets yes <laughs> i mean what what is that life like we live above each we live in this like right next to each other so we already cohabitate she lives right above me that's not really cohabitating uh so we we have like our um a routine, our mm -hmm. routine. Mm hmm Yeah. I don't know what would change. It's great. You're not gonna just buy a big 
spread somewhere. Nah, we don't floss like that, kid. Mm, good. I'm your boy. You see Keep me in the, the ocean. The tiger. You yeah. put me in the ocean. That's who I am at heart. Oh, Jeannie. Just yesterday was leaning over the rail of Leonardo DiCaprio's rental place on Carbon Beach or wherever we were. Jay was 200 feet from the shore doing the backstroke. And she was like, I love that man. That's amazing. That was. Uh, That's who I am. Like when you, that day, just beautiful woman up there by the fire with my buddy, the ace man. I knew she was in good hands. There's literally looking over the railing at you swimming in the ocean. Yeah. She goes, I love that guy. She's the best. Like, she she's seems the, like, she, is she good with her portrayal on Winning Time? Uh, I'm not going to answer questions for her. Oh, uh, okay. But you got to ask. I understand we'll that. We'll go with no. Uh, <laughs> who's more pissed, Hera or Jerry West? Who's more pissed than Jerry West, period? Is Jerry West really that I guy? Have, I have no idea. I've never met him. All right. Uh, do you have Woo Tang? Sorry. Good evening. This is Reba May. Where, hey, Reba May, how you doing? I need to I make a reservation. I'm going to need about 12 rooms. 12 rooms? You must have a whole lot of people coming. Oh, yeah. We on tour. We got everybody. Well, that's fantastic. Who are you with? Um, the Wu-Tang, we got, we got Method Man, RZA, The Jizza, Old Dirty Bassett, Inspector Dead, You God, Ghostface Killer, Raekwon, The Chef, everybody's there. You down with this? Well, I tell you what, sir, I wished I could help you, but I'm not big enough for that. For 12 rooms? No, I only have two rooms. I'll take that, that sounds good. Just so long as we can fit the girls in there with us, you know what I'm saying? Who am I speaking to again? Huh? Oh, this shaving. S H A V I N, like I'm shaving my face. Neat. And you're a uh, rock group or? Straight hip hop, yo, from the streets. Hardcore. Oh, cute. The real deal, weed smokers. You know what I'm saying? My daughters probably know this. I have a daughter who teaches swing. Oh, she knows Wu Tang. She knows Wu Tang. Yeah. But um, <laughs> first of all, I'm alcohol free and smoke free. No, that's straight, man. We smoke outside. You got okay. You got turntables and microphones. I don't have that. I have an old, uh, an old '70s record player. That'll work. Okay, where are you performing? <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me one second. No problem. Yo, Yo, shut the fuck up, man. I'm on the motherfucking telephone. All right. All right? Excuse me, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not quite sure that I can totally fit your needs. Okay, I understand it, but y'all do keep it real over there, right? <laughs> You mean like a movie reel? Yeah, no, like some people is fake. Y'all, oh. y'all are real, right? Yeah, you're right. We're not fake. We're real. No doubt. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know rap music at all? No, I'm afraid I don't. I like uh, rap, uh, particularly Christian rap. Yeah. Word. <laughs> yeah, we could do that too. We do Word. all that. I, I mean, all Christian right, rap. we got it. What a mark. Christian rap, her daughter teaches swing. swing. She wants to. We got a 70s turn. That'll work. <laughs> Keeping it real, she so thinks it's a movie real. Where, where was that from? Was that here? That's Crank Yankers. Oh. First, I don't know, second season or I first, I'd love to get first, on that show. First season, the gay Latino guy. Oh, my Lisa do a call. Who would you call? Uh, your, it's your buddy. My buddy. Isn't it Jimmy's show? It's my show. Your show? Or me and Jimmy's show? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Who would I? Oh, who would I call? Like to do the <laughs> prank? I think you meant who would I call to get on Crank Yankers? No, it's, it's I'm gay like, what are you Latino. talking about? <coughs> it's your body. <laughs> I'd call like, um, <clears throat> I don't know. You, would you call to apply for a job? Is this how it works? The person comes to you with the idea? No, we would sit around and go, Fred Armisen's coming on, or, or Dave Chappelle's come. You know, we'll get, we'll get this guy. And then we'd sit I around. I want to join the gym. You want to join the gym? I want to join the gym. All right. Because I? I need muscles. Should I be the proprietor of Bodies in Motion? Oh, my in God. Pasadena? How much motion? <laughs> no, I'm just joking, though, but you probably are hung. Uh, uh, what did you say? What? Did you say something about No, I got something in my throat. Stop playing. Why are you playing? All right. So let me just tell you something here. Bodies in Motion. Mm. Uh, we have a membership package. Do you have a steam room? Do you have a steam room? Steam room. Oh, yeah. In the women's oh locker room. There's God. the men's locker room. That's but it's not co right? No, we have a women's locker room on one side. Just keep of the facility. like the women away from me. That'd be crazy. Well, once I make love, I love to make love. Well, there's the men's locker room that's yeah. got a steam room. Yeah, but you have pretty it. girls there. 
And the, no, the women's locker room is the women's locker room. The men's locker room is the men's locker room. But I should tell you that Sonia, who's the lady who refills the paper towels and stuff like that, will on occasion go into the male locker room, but only if it's empty. Does so she what, have what, hairy pussies? She have a what? Hairy pussies. Who's that? Does she have hairy pussies? Oh, I, I thought that was a singer. Sonia. I, you know what I mean? She sounds like she look good. No, I don't. Because I love the women. No, nah, yeah. Okay. Can I go to the ladies' steam room? Can we just talk terms Can I here? go to the ladies' steam room? No, you can But I have to stay with the men. You don't have to stay in the, mm. the locker room. You can come out and exercise. I'm going to work out. Yeah, yeah, work out. Yeah, where do you see what I wear when I work out? Uh, I, well, listen, I'm just sales, so I'm not mm. even on the site. You so make a lot I'm, of money? You know, with commissions, I do I do okay. But the <clears throat> So we do a 99 cent. Now, it's 99 cents for the first month. So that's our package. It's $39. Package? For, yeah, Why are you package. talking to me about back package? We're talking about every <laughs> pussies and knows that you're talking about package. Yeah, okay. So it's 99 Show me cent. the package. We do the first Show month. Show me the package. We do the first month for 99 no, cents. Me the you have to and, stick with the package. And $39 for every month after that. But Worth if you commit it. to a three-year... Mm. If you commit to three years, we can do a flat rate Worth of $2,200. It. Okay. Do you accept cash? Master charge? With Visa, Discover. Fine, I'll pay you in dig. <laughs> Fine. Look, um, if you're going to sign, if you want to come up and take a tour of the facility, that'll be fine before we sign the contract. I, I understand that. What? Uh, no, I was going to ask you something yeah. that may not be fair. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you know? Whatever happened to blah, blah, blog? I don't know. We'll do it. We'll do it in the new year. Okay. What do you know about the Ice House reopening? Just that it's reopening. They got remodeled. Did nice. Isn't a bus a new owner of the Ice Johnny. House? Johnny. So there's six kids all together? Yeah. And one of them bought the Ice House? Yes. That is the closest comedy club to my house. Let's do it. For the sake, for the... Fucking, can you blow a call well, in want, and tell them to get that place finished? I want to do another one of the shows with you. I get jealous every time you guys post it. Yeah. I'm like, man, that was the best. Let's get it. Let's call Johnny. No, when you did it at the improv? Oh, yeah. I want to get back on your show like that. Jay was the best of the night. The night? Come on. The best of the decade. Big pussies? No, I mean, Jay just slayed. I, I don't know. I mean, to be fair... You know, people don't have a long, they only know so much about everyone. I think a lot of people think of Jay as an actor and a, com you know, comedian, but they don't know him as just a killer stand-up comedian. But Jay went out at the improv, and we'll do another one soon if you want to come back. I do. Come back and just fucking slay the, the audience. By the way, this was like my favorite booking ever, because you and me were talking on Instagram you right. slid into my DMs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Wait, ha, what, 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 what would your non-gay Hispanic sound like sliding if he wanted to slide into someone's DMs? Let me slide into your DMs. <laughs> what would the gay one sound like? Let me slide into the DMs. <laughs> okay, sorry. I like to slide like that, sliding. <laughs> Wait. Sorry, DM slide. I was at the Mechanical Bull on Sunset Boulevard. You know, they oh, had the yeah. Mechanical Bull. Yes. What do you mean I have to ride on top? Oh, you want to get under the Mechanical yeah, Bull. Yeah, let's get it going. No, I think there's a lot of pulleys and darkness, chains. Darkness, light, and, darkness, light. Oi, blacking out. Uh, I, 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 this is pretty mechanical. You'd Too probably, much safety. You'd probably get tetanus if you got under mm. there. You'd probably get your nuts caught in a I gear. I know her. I know her. Who? Tetanus? No, tech. tech Tetanus. So you slid into my DMs, mm -hmm. wish me a happy new year. I said, great. You asked me if I want, then I just sent you my, you asked if I would come on the show and then I sent you my number. You were already, I know you got like 5,000 texts on your phone. Uh, and then you, it was just great. There was like no assistance, nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just two dudes making yeah. it happen. Yeah. 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 Just two dudes two masturbating dudes. alongside each other. Um, all right. Let's see. I think, uh, 
I'll give Jay another. I'll give me a plug and I'll give uh, Jay a plug. Philadelphia, by the way, Helium will be this weekend, Great January room. 6th and 7th. Yeah, four shows. Doing live pods there. I'm also doing stand up there as well. Dan Dunn's going to join me up on stage and have a couple of belts. So there's that. And then there's uh, Dallas. Now, that's coming up January 21st and we'll be at the uh, Eco Lounge and Music Hall. It's a theater. I'll be John Popper's basically performing all his hits and he'll bring his band. It's not a blues traveler show. He'll have his keyboardist and he'll have his musicians with him. And I'm going to do stand up and John Popper will come out and do all the, uh, the hits you love. And uh, you can just go to adamcroll.com for all that. Working Blue with John Popper's out there January 20th and 21st. So you can go to the theater show if you want, or you can hang out for the whole weekend with us. It's a, it's a, a land-based cruise is basically what it is. Uh, Jay, live dates, jaymore.com is where you would go. And uh, God bless you, Jay. Come back anytime you want. We'll get you set up the next improv show. Yeah, let's go to a game well. soon. Oh. Where can you go? Wow. Just pick one. Clippers? You <laughs> son of a bitch. Whenever you want. Whatever. I love Jeannie. You know, I love you. You're out I'd of love, the will. I'd love to go to the Lakers game. Until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Jay Moore saying mahalo. Mahalo.